Working in the news business, you come across various videos or tweets coming from representatives like Representative Steve King that make it abundantly clear what his ideology is on race. He has been making statements about race for years now, and he puts down Mexicans, blacks, Jewish people. He once defended the use of swastikas, and so it's curious that NBC did not want to refer to Steve King as a racist. In fact, their standards department put out a letter or a memo to the employees at NBC encouraging them to quote, be careful to avoid characterizing King's remarks as racist. It is okay to attribute to others as in what many are calling racist or something like that. That was from Susan Sullivan, NBC's standards division department is where she works in. And Huffington Post reported on this because one of their staffers reached out to Huffington Post with this memo. And then after the Huffington Post wrote about it, they changed course, writing, quote, we revised our guidelines on Representative Steve King's comments. It is fair to characterize King's comments as racist and to point out that he has a history of racist comments and the context can be shared that others hold that view as well. Yeah, so this is the most extreme case of um, whataboutism, and and both sides do it. You know, some people say uh, supporting white supremacy is racism, and others say it isn't. But white supremacy is by definition racist. It says that whites are superior to other races. Now, before Steve King had already made it abundantly clear when he was on MSNBC, he talked about how. Well, what other culture has ever done anything good in the world? It's only Western civilization, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and America that has ever done anything positive. And so that was clear. He said, we can't restore our civilization with someone else's babies. That was clear. But for NBC and New York Times and all the other media organizations, no, 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 not clear enough. But in this case, he said, what's wrong with white supremacy? And NBC is still like, mm, yeah, but is he saying white people are superior to other races? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the definition. And so, but even then, no, some other people are calling it racist. So I think that there are two possibilities here as to why the standards division put out this memo. One possibility is that we all know that journalists and the mainstream media have this obsession with appearing objective. And oftentimes they mistake objectivity with neutrality. And so they might fear that calling it what it is and referring to Steve King's statements as racist might appear to be taking a position or having a bias. When, I mean, the facts are on the table. You see the same videos, you see the same content that we see on a regular basis. I think that when you have that much evidence, it's okay to tell your audience the truth about who this politician really is. The other concern might be, I don't know, a possible defamation lawsuit. I don't. No way, no. But it, but but your second point is is merited. It is general caution. Mm-hmm. So whether it's because of their concern about lawsuits or anything else, but mainly political pressure, that they are like, hey, don't ever call anything what it actually is. Make sure that you are politically correct rather than factually correct. So you want to talk about political correctness? This is it. And and so, I want to expand on what Anna was saying about neutrality and objectivity. It's not just that neutrality is the wrong standard; it is actually the opposite of objectivity. So, when someone says I I'm in favor of white supremacy, where that whites are superior to other races, and you say, well, I can't tell if he's in favor of white supremacy. Some people say he is, and some people say he isn't. That is a neutral position. But is that is the opposite of the objective position? He just told you he's in favor of white supremacy. So you then change the truth, change the objective truth to make it neutral, which is a lie. And so that's a great, great trick that I don't know if it was the Republicans establishment or whoever, maybe it was an honest error, I doubt it, but that's okay. That unfortunately has been pounded in the heads of all of these journalists. Do not worry about the truth, be neutral. Be neutral to the truth, and that doesn't do your job. That's that's the opposite of being a journalist. I yeah, I exact, I completely agree with you. And NBC News was the outlet that 
refused to do anything with Ronan Farrow's reporting on Harvey Weinstein. And I only bring that up because that was a giant mistake on the part of NBC. That was a huge story that they should have aired, you know, especially with the overwhelming um, details and evidence that he had in that piece. But they avoided publishing it. I, I don't know what their reasoning was behind it, but there's this pattern emerging where it appears that NBC wants to protect people that they shouldn't be protecting. It's your job, I'm talking about the news division specifically, to do your jobs and share the news with the American people, not you know, try to protect your own brand by pretending like you're neutral or or avoiding offending anyone in a position of power. And so look, this one got to be easy because he he couldn't have made it any easier unless he openly I mean saying out you're in favor you don't see what's wrong with white supremacy is about 1% different than saying yeah I'm a proud racist right so i mean nbc until they got pressure didn't even want to go that extra percentage and they were skittish about it but they got so much pushback that they're like oh wait a minute wait a minute our uh, the people at the country club that we all have drinks with mm -hmm. now are saying we're doing the wrong thing okay then we change even the new york times changed oh my god even if they changed then okay fine and by the way great credit to yashar ali who broke the story for huffington post um but on more important issues now i'm not saying that the issue of racism isn't important it's massively important only because steve king's on his own here uh but when it came to the Republican Party versus Democratic Party versus the truth on the issue, for for example, torture during the Bush years, what what they would the standards for almost all the media companies was that you were they said what human rights groups and critics say is torture, and oftentimes they didn't even say that they call it enhanced interrogation. But wait a minute, you don't have to do that caveat. It was torture according to United States law, not just international law that we were supposed to abide by. Uh, and we were uh, it had signed on to, but U.S. law, waterboarding, let alone the physical uh, assaults that we did, let alone the sleep deprivation, which is also torture, let alone burying people alive or threatening to bury people alive, I should say, uh, which we uh, did on occasions and all those things. Those are the definition, according to the law, of torture. But since Dick Cheney and the Republicans said, "Do not call it torture; otherwise, we'll say you're biased." All those media organizations chose to be politically correct and not factually correct. So they would say things like what human rights groups and critics say is torture, but what Dick Cheney says is enhanced interrogation. Well, you were neutral, but you were not objective and you did not do your job. So I think that a progressive critique of the media bothers them more than a right wing critique. Because the right wings are a bunch of knuckleheads. Why don't you do propaganda for us? Right, that's not an interesting critique, but when we challenge them on what is objective standards, then they get really uncomfortable and they don't want to have that conversation because they know they're wrong. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com/join.